three and one. It's the title of this study. Okay. We're going to look at the Webster's 1828 Dictionary of Trinity. And we're going to talk about the Trinity. The definition in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, because a lot of people that do teachings will use that definition. In theology, the union of three persons in one Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? You can't find Trinity in the Bible, so you have to look it up elsewhere. My, okay? So in theology, well, let's look up theology in the Bible. Not in there. Theology, divinity, the science of God and divine things, or the science which teaches the existence, character, and the attributes of God. Science, falsely so-called. How many times have we heard that? Um, and there's more to it if you want to look it up, but uh, we saw the word in there, divinity. So we look at divinity, the state of being divine, uh, deity, Godhead. So now, Godhead, that's a title for God, it's its own word, its own title, it got bumped down under Trinity. So, theology leads to divinity, and it got bumped all the way down under divinity. Uh, one of the definitions of divinity, God, the deity, the supreme being. My printer's making noise. A false god, a pretended deity of pagans, is under divinity. That's funny, because isn't that what the Trinity is? A celestial being? Um, essence. We found essence in the definitions of theology and divinity. So you look up essence. Let's look up essence in the King James Bible. It's not there. Essence. That which constitutes the particular nature of a being or substance or of a genius and which distinguishes it from all others. You know, existence. The quality of being. A being existent person has heavenly essences. Okay. Species of being constitutes substance. I can go on and on. But essence isn't in the Bible. So by their definitions up here so far, we haven't been able to look in the Bible at all. Union. Up there we had in theology the union. Let's look up union. We find, let's see, communion is the only word that pops up with the type in union. So the word union not in the Bible. Okay. One, the act of joining two or more things unto, into one, and thus forming a compound body or a mixture, or the junction or correlation of things thus united. Union differs from connection. Three, the junction or united existence of spirit and matter as the union of soul and body. Person? But for a person, you have to have the spirit also. And there's some other verses. But bottom line, um, the next one, three persons. You won't find three persons in here when referring to the Godhead. So then they have to try to define what three persons is for the Godhead. It's not in here. Okay. Then they say one Godhead. Godhead is in the Bible. We're about to get to those. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Godhead, the definition of Godhead, first of all, it's a title for God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. That's the definition of Godhead. Bible definition of Godhead. Not theology, not the union, not three persons in one Godhead. That's not the definitions. So they took the title for God, replaced it with Trinity, and then they took the definition of Godhead and threw it under Trinity. And then they added a lot of definitions that's not even part of Godhead. Then they have all these other terms where they just, like I said, Godhead's not that important anymore. It just keeps getting bumped down and bumped down under other definitions. Person is in the Bible. Um, Person is a reference to Jesus Christ is the only person of the Godhead. And it's referenced three or four times in the Bible. But for this study, um, definition, an individual human being consisting of body and soul. 
We apply the word to living beings only, possessed of a rational nature. The body, when dead, is not called a person. It is applied alike to a man, woman, or child. Why is it not? If it only can be referred to someone who is living, that means they have a spirit. So, person individually has a body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay? Uh, the Bible backs that up time and time again. Anytime you see he, him, her, man, woman, child, you have a name of somebody. It's a name of a person. Okay? And I'll be doing a video on why do they always keep going to the Old Testament to try to prove the Trinity. That will be another video. So, uh, Godhead is mentioned three times in the Bible. Reference to heathen deities, okay? Uh, when you look under the definition of Godhead, I don't always go by the 18, Webster's 1828 Dictionary because um, the reason a lot of this philosophical, philosophical terms made it in, you got to understand, the 1828 Dictionary is not just for words off, out, they didn't just say we're only using the words in the King James Bible and defining those in our dictionary, that's it. No, they define tons of words that aren't even in the Bible. So, but my biggest thing is, is if you're going to use the Bible and call yourself a Bible believer, when you go to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, that word better be in this Bible when you're trying to prove the Bible. Now you can use definition like I did of Trinity to prove something else wrong because the Bible doesn't teach it, but I'm, I'm all for using the Webster's 1828 Dictionary when it comes to words that are in the Bible, not using words that are not in the Bible. But Martin Luther, people like him decided, we want the Word of God, it's by faith, but instead of saying, I want nothing to do with the Catholic Church, what did they do? Well, we're just going to reform it. We're going to keep some things and throw out these other things. So that's how all this junk got into the Protestant movement, I believe. Um, and not everybody would, was like this reforming. They want there's a lot of groups that didn't want anything to do with the Catholic Church, who stuck with the Godhead, who used terms in the Bible because they believe this book. Okay. So Webster's 1828 Dictionary of Godhead said Godship, not in the Bible, deity. Not in the Bible. Divinity, not in the Bible. Divine nature is in the Bible once. Or essence, not in the Bible. Now this is the only part that I agree with because it's backed by the Bible. Applied to the true God. It is a title for God. That's what Godhead is. It's a title for God. Um, and to heathen deities. That's why I was down there. I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Why? Um, why is it considered part of de de heathen deities? Because it was brought in by the Catholic Church by people who didn't want to break away from the Catholic Church completely. They just wanted to reform it. So they kept man's traditions, and I'm getting ahead of myself, and the wisdom of the world. Okay. Now, uh, Colossians 2.8. We're going to turn to Colossians 2.8. I have it here because I try to keep the... I go through a lot of scripture and I try to keep it short. So I'll try to take a pause before every time I do a verse. And if you hit the space bar for using a computer or pause it, then you can turn to it real quick. I suggest using... Well, King James Bible only for a perfect written word in English. God's word. You want to know where God's perfect written word can be found? King James Bible. If it was the only book... I could just say the Word of God, but I can't. There's over 300 Bible perversions out there. So Colossians 2.8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. A lot of those uh, definitions we read, even in Godhead, that they tried to bring in, Martin Luther, the Catholic Church, everything, uh, tried to bring in, it's philosophy. It says, Spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men. Well, we've always used Trinity. We've always said, you know, God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's, it's widely accepted among the, the body of Christ. Well, not the body of Christ. Um, 
body of Satan, after the rudiments of the world, and we'll get into that later about the um, wisdom of the world, okay, and not after Christ. The Jesus of the Trinity is Satan. He's an antichrist. He's a fake Jesus. Now, the reason I say this, remember this verse, it's a memory verse, we should all have it memorized. Um, but it says, not after Christ. The Jesus of the Godhead is the true Jesus Christ. What's the next verse? Verse 9. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ of the Godhead. Okay? The Trinity people are not going after Christ. They're into the philosophy, uh, through, they're into the philosophy, vain deceit, traditions of men, and rudiments of the world. That's what they're in. We went through all these definitions. They're not found in here. Romans 1.17. You want to turn to Romans 1.17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. 1 Timothy 3.9 talks about how we're supposed to have faith in the mysteries. The Godhead, it's a mystery. Great is the mystery of godliness. Um, we're supposed to have faith in that. Faith to faith, as is it is written. That's the number one thing I want to talk to you about on that verse. As it is written. Is Trinity in here? Essence? Theology? Three persons referring to the Godhead? Divinity? Essence? We did that. Union? As it is written. I know it's hard for some people. Verse 18 of Romans 1, 17, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. How many people are holding the truth? Godhead, but promoting the Trinity, unrighteousness. A lot of people today. 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Truly saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women can see the Godhead. They can see it. Um, there for a while, there was a big, a uh, lot of videos coming out there for a while, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, and you had all these people claiming to be Bible-believing I believe in God-fearing men and women that we talked to them and said, hey, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, that's not in the Bible. It's not a title for that seven-year time period. The tribulation or the great tribulation, I think, the great tribulation is not a title for that time period. And you know what? A lot of them were like, you know what? They're right. We need to use the time of Jacob's trouble because that's in the Bible. That's the proper title for that seven-year time period. Then all of a sudden, God starts revealing to us that we're being incorrect when we talk about the Godhead using the Trinity. Godhead's a title. How come people don't have that same attitude that, you know what? Trinity's not the title, it's Godhead. I'm only going to use Godhead. Why did their attitude change? Why? Because the Trinity versus the Godhead has to do with two different gods. Lowercase g God and capital G God. Uh, Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, yes, you're worshiping a false god if you believe in a god that will send you through that time period. But when it came down to it, this was the backbreaker. Godhead versus the Trinity. Who's truly saved? Who's truly lost? Okay. Um, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. 
Once again, if you have the Holy Spirit in you and you're a true Bible believer, you'll trust the Godhead and believe in the Godhead. You'll reject the Trinity. So that they are without excuse. I don't know how else to say it. We've been given a perfect written record. Perfect written word of God that tells about the Godhead, shows that Jesus is the only person of the Godhead. And we're, I keep skipping ahead because I'm giving away the secret. Um, these three are one. It doesn't say three in one. Are one. And we're going to get that. So they are without excuse. They stand before God at the great white throne to be judged. They're without excuse. We've told them, brothers and sisters in Christ, time and time again, stick to the Godhead. It's the true title for God, and it's absolute truth. It's in the Word of God. Trinity isn't. Uh, without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. The Trinity. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. You know, one of the big things about the Trinity is just because they can't figure out how the Godhead truly works, because you're supposed to have faith in the mysteries. We talked about uh, 1 Timothy 3.9. Uh, Raise the mystery of godliness. We're not to know how it works. God revealed more of the Godhead to us in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they were ignorant. Okay. So they have to use their imagination and foolish hearts to darken because of it. They have to know how it works. I've got to figure out how it works, and I've got to use man's wisdom to do so. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And a brother said this in one of his videos. Um, what does the Bible call an atheist? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. I had to throw that in to the fact that, and we'll get to one of the verses, we're not to make images of the Godhead, period. 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. I find it very interesting that most, the pe most of the people, the group of people, including the Catholic Church, that defend the Trinity hate repentance as part of salvation. They hate the changed life. They hate calling upon the name of the Lord to save them because it's salvation in order for God to hear that prayer. You have to put your iniquities that's in your heart, the sins that are in your heart, you have to put them at the foot of the cross. You understand that there's going to be a changed life after salvation. It's funny that those are the people that defend the Trinity. Verse 25, who change the truth of God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The truth of God into a lie. That's all that's in my place there. Truth of God and a lie. Uh, in Trinity, in theology, the union, three persons. Divinity, essence, union. Who changed the truth of God? They're changing the word of God by adding to it and subtracting from it. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. They're going off man. Man's word, world's wisdom. They're, they're serving Satan. More than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. I can't make it any more clear than that. Okay, we're going to go through a lot more scriptures, but the Trinity is not in the Bible for a reason. Okay, Because Trinity is not the Godhead. 
We're going to show uh, an example of that later. Acts 17.29. You want to turn to Acts 17.29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's devices. In the time of this ignorance, how many of us use the Trinity? Terms of the Trinity? The name Trinity, the terms of the Trinity, how many of us had images of the Godhead, the Trinity, Dove, God the Father, Jesus Christ, the body. We had Bibles, we had magazines, we had gospel tracts with images on them. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at. Those of us who are truly saved, hey, that's wrong. The Holy Spirit in us, hey. You're using those terms wrong. And so many of us repented. We're not using them. We're sticking to the Bible. We're sticking to God's Word. We're not adding to by or changing the, God's, uh, the truth of God into a lie. Okay. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. I repented. Have you repented? Are you still clinging so hard to the Trinity? See, the Trinity, by the very definition of Trinity, it, was, it is trying to liken itself to Godhead, a title for God. It is trying to replace the title Godhead, and at first it's likened to it. All it means is the same thing, and next thing you know, you're not even using Godhead, you're saying Trinity all the time. Yeah, and you don't see the Satan's hidden agenda there? See, now today you hardly hear the Trinity people say, we read the definition, union of three persons in one Godhead. You don't, I don't think I've ever heard somebody who tries to talk about the Trinity say that. Have you? It is mostly today they drop the word head off God and they say God in three persons. They switch it around. It's no longer three persons in one. It is now one in three. That's not an accident. They throw that in word, I-N, in the description of the Godhead. God in three persons. Is that what the Bible truly teaches? This whole study in a nutshell. Three in one? Is that what the Bible teaches? In. The word I in. Is that the, what the Bible teaches? Okay. 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear a record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Let that sink in for a second. How many of us always say, see, see, three in one, body, soul, spirit, three in one. I've made that mistake. Is that what the Bible teaches? No, it doesn't. It says these three are one. And I'll be doing an example to show the difference. 1 John 5, 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. Not are one, they agree in one. And we'll explain that later. But when it comes to saying three in one, we're not to be saying that. It's these three are one. All right? See if we can get this set up right. I brought, what do you call it, visual aids. Okay? Still want to keep this here. Set this to the side for a second. Okay. Let's go with the three and one. Here's the one. Or actually, let's do the three so you can see the ones. You have the three. And you, you see people say, even Bible believing, God fearing Christian men and women that are saved, that stand for the Godhead, we slip up and say three in one. Okay? Now, here's the three. Three bowls. Make sure we pull it back on them. Here's the one. So we say three. In one. How many bowls are there? 
Four. Is that the Godhead? No. We're not supposed to be saying three and one. Okay. Now, that's what the Trinity tries to say. Three and one, you've got four gods. Okay. Four bowls that are separate. Now, the other way that they like to say it, because they switch it around and say God in three persons. So, you have three bowls, three bowls, and they say that there's God in each one. How many bowls are on the table? Six. Is that the Godhead? No. And if you want to add the fact that they're saying person, if I had enough bowls, you'd have to put one more bowl in each. And how many bowls would be on the table? Nine. Is that the Godhead? No. Now, if you go and you are a Bible believer and you stand for the Bible, when you change the one little word from R to N, you make a mess of things. You start promoting a false god, multiple gods. Now, if you stick to the Bible, three are one. There's only one. But if you notice, this bowl is blue. Notice the shape of the bowl. The purpose of the bowl put stuff in it. But these three are one bowl. There's only one bowl. Is that the Godhead? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, the verse, 1 John 5, 8, the, these three agree in one. Okay. God the Father, Son of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit of God the Father, they're not going to contradict each other. Okay, they're always going to agree in one. All three aspects I told you about this, they're going to say, yeah, the bowl's blue. Yeah, the shape of the bowl, that's the, the shape it's supposed to be. The purpose of the bowl, to put stuff in, yeah, I agree, we agree in one. That's what it's supposed to be. Now, I'm using this images, like these bowls, to show you plain English. I'm not trying to explain how it works. I don't want to fall into sin and heresy like the Trinity people do, and some people do with the Godhead when they're fighting with the Trinity people because that's what they want you to do, to stray into heresy trying to explain how the Godhead works. I can only tell you what the Godhead is. These three, the three aspects, these three are one, one bowl. Body, soul, and spirit are one one God. They all make up God the Father. One God. Okay. Three are one. Three agree in one. We talked about that one. So the main goal is Satan. The biggest part of this teaching I want you to walk away with, brothers and sisters in Christ, is you've got to take that out of your vocabulary. It's not three in one. Because the word in is what the Trinity people use. It's not what God's perfect written word uses. And there's a reason for it. Every word in here is in there for a reason. Okay? Are one. These three are one. So, main goal of Satan. Get you away from the book. As we talked about in those verses up above. Uh, to change the truth of God into a lie, to get you away from the book. If you heard my encouragement videos, um, Courageous Man, Foolish Man, I'm encouraging you to stay in the Bible. The book you read the most should be this. It shouldn't be literature, it shouldn't be poems, it shouldn't be, you know, a, you know, I forgot what they call them. I have some up there that I haven't touched. They got dust on it. They're like kids' books about investigators and everything, proving people are frauds and stuff. Um, the number one book that you should read the most is the King James Bible for English-speaking people. 
that's the number one book you should read the most. And you stay in it, so when people try to bring terms out from, the, from outside the Bible, or take stuff from the Bible, yank it out, and put other stuff in, you can see right through them. Um, if he can get you away from God's Word, he can really mess you up, Satan. If his servants, uh, children, if you want to say, remember, they're of their father, the devil, and uh, we'll get to that verse. Um, their point that Satan wants them, he uses them to get you away from the Word so you can get messed up. He uses them to keep lost people from the Word. He uses them to keep people that are professing Christians from the Word. And then he tries to get you, brothers and sisters in Christ, away from the Word. The two big attacks that a sister in Christ told me about, and a brother in Christ did great videos on it, the main two is assurance of salvation and your testimony. Those are the two main things when, G when Satan or his servants, his children, false converts, try to pull you away from the Word of God. It's so you can lose your, that you'll start doubting your salvation because you're killing your testimony. You're starting to fall into sin and heresy. But there's a third one I threw in there. It's also to get you to worship God. Satan is God. If he can get you away from this book, he can get you to worship him. And if he gets you to worship him, remember in the Old Testament, God saying, I am a jealous God. There's no other God but me. If Satan can get you to worship him, if he can get you to doubt your salvation because you're, uh, uh, was it killing your testimony by falling into sin and wickedness, he can get God to punish you. Okay. Mark 14, 15, if you want to turn there. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard it, or heard, Satan cometh immediately and take, taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. How many Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women have we seen fall away because of the Trinity? Fall away from absolute truth. I already mentioned before, when it came to the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, they're all like, I'm only using the King James Bible. I'm a Bible believer. I'm only using terms that are in the Bible. That's the title for that seven-year period. I'm only using that title. It debunks, it completely debunks post and mid-trib, because pre-time of Jacob's trouble, Jacob's another word for Israel, it's about Israel. It's not about the church. It totally debunks it. Same thing goes for the Trinity versus the Godhead. You use Godhead and you use the Word of God, it debunks the Trinity. Why are people having a hard time with it when it comes to the Godhead versus the Trinity? We just read there. Satan comes by and takes the seed that's been sown in their heart. Taketh away the Word, which is the seed, this is uh, Jesus explaining it afterwards. Take away the Word that was sown in their hearts. What's his goal? That's what Satan's goal is. He doesn't want you using the Word of God. He wants you using man's words, man's wisdom. Okay. Matthew 4.4. 4. It's the next place we're going to. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is Jesus when he's being tempted by Satan. Satan kept adding to Scripture, taking away. And what did Jesus respond? Man shall not live by bread alone, flesh, but by every word that cometh from God. Let's see. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You're to live by this. Not the flesh, not man's words, the word of God. Satan kept tempting him by adding to Scripture. What does the Trinity people do? They add to Scripture. They leave stuff out. They ignore stuff. They try to prove theirs. Okay. 